fellow romance readers, I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah, and this is Post Book Depression. You know that feeling you get when you finish a good book that you didn't want to end? Have you finished a book and just weren't ready to move on from the story and its beloved characters? You find yourself needing just a little more? This multi-trope romance podcast gives you the opportunity to dig deeper with us into books we love as we discuss all the reasons we can't move on. Feeling chatty? You can continue the conversation with us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast or on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group. We would be so grateful if you would subscribe to our podcast and take a moment to leave a review. Are you ready? Let's discuss. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Amy. And I'm Sarah. And today we're going to be discussing Where You Belong by Stacey Williams. The first few minutes, we're going to do a brief review of the story without any spoilers. Then we are going to shift into a deeper discussion that's going to include lots of spoilers. But don't worry, we're going to let you know before we do shift into that deeper book discussion. That's right. So before we jump in, Amy, tell us what the story is all about. A chance encounter on an elevator forces a professional football star and a quiet songwriter to work together to dispel a negative press frenzy in this fast-paced, delightful football romance. Sarah, what did you think about Where You Belong? I was just, uh, I, I don't even know how to describe all the feelings I was feeling. Stacey Williams is a new author to me. Me too. And um, this story just had so much heart. It had so much depth. I felt like, I feel like sometimes with football stories, they can have a lot of depth or they can be on the little bit, a little more lighter side. Mm-hmm. And and so this whole thing, it, the whole story, the whole time I just kept thinking, there's just so much to it. There was like, do you there know was what I'm nice, saying? There was a rich like, depth. To yes. It. it was just, I was in love with the characters and their stories. And um, I loved watching them grow as friends and fall in love. I, I was here for the story. It oh, was me so too. good. Me too. It starts with a little bit of an enemies to lovers yeah, feel to it. A little bit it. of vibe. Uh, I enjoyed, there's a really heavy fam- family dynamic mm-hmm. in this story as well. And the enemies to lovers that I mentioned is kind of from her perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a running joke as it goes <laughs> yes. on. And one of the other things I have to say um, that I was just, I was very pleasantly surprised um, because this author takes a little turn that you yes, uh, do not see coming. There's a little twisty twist. Yeah, and I was <laughs> I was really excited about that because I did not see that happening. Same. So. All right, let's get into our ratings. Okay. Angst. Angst. This was just a one for me. Same. Yeah. It wasn't overly mm-hmm. angsty. There's some components, but nothing that you're just like. Oh. It's not over the top for sure. Right. Humor. Humor. It was like a one. Same. Like I, I, I kind of battle between one to 1.25, but I've, I, I stay, I was, I'll stick with a one. There's I think like it was. A, some humor sprinkled throughout. There's a couple over. of characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially later on, there's a character <laughs> that brings some humor and stuff. Oh, and, oh. and the male, uh, uh, excuse me, the female character, she is, uh-huh. she's funny. Agree. All right. Spiciness. Curious um, to see what you're going to say here. It was a 0.25. Okay, I gave it a zero. Yeah, it was, I felt <laughs> like that was clean. generous. Very clean. There's some kissing. There's some kissing and... Flirty banter. Yeah, but they, I mean, it's everything's off page. For, yes, absolutely. Um, it, what, it, anything that does transpire, transpires off page, but... Um, if you're looking for a clean romance, this would be a it is one a to pick up. It is a perfect clean romance, but it, like... It just, doesn't lose anything. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> there, I don't know. I have no words. It's gritting her, gritting her teeth. Yeah. All right. Tears. Uh, tears. It was a two for me. Okay. Um, because of some of the things that the characters are dealing with and they go through that they have been through. So I did one. The, there are characters that endure some hardships in their yeah. life and their childhoods were not great. And right. so some of the storyline does have a little bit of a heavy component to yes. it. Yes. And I did not cry. I Me have neither. to be clear. I did yeah. not cry, but I feel like some of the... Just the weight of some of the things yeah, they deal with. It's just kind of br- yeah. brought the tears. Sad. Yes. It, yeah. it, it, hurt, it makes your heart sad. All right. Drum roll. Overall. This was a five. It was a five. It was a five. I, I cannot. Five. <laughs> I I cannot wait to read more from this author. I I loved it. I I just I was so happy the whole time I was reading it. Even in the parts where I was just like, oh. It, it was, was just, a fast, easy read. Mm-hmm. It, I couldn't put it down. Basically, I read the story in twenty four hours, yeah. more or less. I love the male main character so much. He's the sweetest, and this really is a sweet friends to lover story. Mm-hmm. I said it has enemies to lovers, but that's more or less at the top of the book. Yeah. And then the more you get into it, it does transfer into friends it's, to lovers. Oh. Yeah. It's uh, the most 
wonderful friends to lovers story. It was just... It was just the palate cleanser that I needed. It was perfect. It was one of those books that you pick up and you're like, yes. Yeah. I have been needing this story. Yeah. It was so good. I loved it. (laughs) That concludes our spoiler-free quick review of the story. Now we're going to shift into a deeper book discussion. So if you haven't read this story, go check out this story and then come back and join us on this deeper discussion. And then we would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us on Instagram at Post Book Depression Podcast, on Facebook in our Post Book Depression discussion group. And you can always email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com. In all of the delightful, or not so delightful in this case, <laughs> way to have a meet cute, yeah. Sean and Andy's story tops the cake. <laughs> they <laughs> they open this scene up with getting stuck in an elevator. Mm-hmm. Friend, let's kick this off with their not so delightful meet cute. Yeah, she thinks he's kind of being rude, a little bit of a jerk, and he does kind of come across that way, I guess. I did kind of have in my head, though, because I know how I am in elevators. I'm like, I think he's uncomfortable that they're stuck in an elevator and he's trying not to freak out right now. Yeah. That's how I read that whole scene. But yeah, she tries to engage him a few times and just He's not having it. No, but in the midst of that, he gives her really good advice whenever she says, I'm here to sing the national anthem. Can you sing? Well, I guess we'll find out. (laughs) Just, (laughs) yeah, and you get to decide when you move on. And of course, he has no knowledge as to what she's referring to. He doesn't know anything about her life or her I love that she doesn't know football. So she clearly does not recognize him at all. His responses to those little questions that she Uh would ask about why he was in the elevator just made me smile so big because I felt that. I don't know anything about football either. So I would be in her shoes as well. Yeah, I I definitely would be right along there. I wouldn't be able to. I mean, I guess you could probably um, take a look at his physique and think, hmm. He does something important here. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're a football player. So especially for the NFL, you're probably not going to be looking like your average Joe, <laughs> which is walking down the street. But that's um, fair. Yeah, I, I liked it. Well, we learn in the elevator scene that she, like you mentioned, she's there to sing the national anthem. She Mm -hmm. has won a contest that she did not submit for herself. And it's after they finally get rescued and he hurries off to go get ready for the football game. And she meets the PR person or Miranda, I think her name was, to get settled in before she sings the national anthem. And at this point, it's still a little vague of the contest and what Mm -hmm. had happened. And it's not really until she goes out to sing the national anthem that it's revealed to us that it's her late husband who was in the military Mm -hmm. who nominated her to sing this national anthem for the opening of this football game. That montage that they set her up before Uh explaining everything, I don't know how a person would sing after that. I wouldn't be able to, (laughs) for sure. I mean, it's only been, you know, a little over a year. And so there would be no way that I would be able to. But I love in that moment because she is fighting emotions. Mm Mm-hmm. And she happens to make eye contact. Which I love. With Sean. Because at that point, she's kind of annoyed with him. And yeah. He kind of uh, gets under her skin and yeah. she looks at him and he gives her a little gives nod. Gives a smirk. Yeah. yeah and a like, little nod. Okay, let's let's hear it. And she does it and she knocks it out of the park. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean that t- that pun, but he's <laughs> going anyway. <laughs> well, wrong sport. But, wrong sport, Amy. <laughs> Anywho, she, she killed the song and I loved it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sean, who's a very important uh, player on the team, he's dating a model, Morgan. He's kind of established that their relationship was not anything of value. Mm-hmm. There was very surface level. They don't know each other very well. He feels like she's with him because of his status. And so it's more of the visual imagery and kind of the PR promotion Mm -hmm. that's benefiting this relationship. And this kind of sets the stage for the story moving forward because after the national anthem, Andy goes up to sit in the owner's box. And just outside of that are all of the, or a lot of the football spouses and their girlfriends. Girlfriends. And Morgan is one of those. Mm -hmm. And so she has a little bit of interaction with them, um, but not very much. And so she can visualize later on who this Morgan person is that has been connected to Sean. And so we learned that he's not happy in this relationship. In fact, they had broken up Weeks before. Yes, weeks he before. He broke up with her. But she's still acting like she's in a relationship with him. She's wearing his jersey. And so gross. when Andy interacts with her, she's under the impression that he and Morgan are dating. 
Yeah. We shift over to Andy and her mother, this kind of toxic relationship, which we're going to dig into in a little bit, but I want to set the groundwork for the benefit that her mother is expecting her to attend, Mm -hmm. perform at, more or less. She's the entertainment for this benefit. She's from a very well-off family. There are high society standards that have been placed upon her, and she's going to be the entertainment at this benefit. Sean has also been in communication with his agent about how he's not feeling very fulfilled in a lot of the press that these functions that he's having to attend where it's merely just for visuals, more or less. Mm -hmm. And he's wanting to participate in only things that have important values attached to it, things that really matter. So as a reader, you know, they're going to end up at the same benefit. (laughs) And you're preparing for that. And lo and behold, it's the night of the benefit. She is dressed exquisitely, looking phenomenal. And in walks Sean Mm -hmm. to this benefit. He's come alone because obviously he and Morgan have broken up. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this scene where Sean is coming up, her mother is coming up, and everything that transpires in this heated moment between her and her mother. I just remember feeling, as I was reading it, her embarrassment because her mother comes immediately insults how she looks, which Sean is thinking she looks breathtaking. I love that he spoke out loud. That I know. she was breathtaking. I know. And and so she's already attacking because she didn't wear what she wanted her to wear. Just really, I mean, her mom is just nasty. Really can't understand anything of how she treats her daughter the way she does. And Sean does not like this interaction that is going down between the two of them. He does not leave, which I kept thinking to myself, oh my goodness, this would be so embarrassing. But I also loved him so much in that moment for staying there, kind of wanting to protect her against the verbal attack that is her mother. (laughs) Even when when her mother makes assumptions that they're there as Mm -hmm. a date. Which no one Which corrected. Was, yeah, they. she doesn't correct that. But her mother has, it's more than just the dress. Her mother thinks that she should be with this Bryce let's guy. Talk, let's just dig a little bit deeper into her mother. Oh, and her. he's gross. So she, years ago when she was young, I think they said 19, she dated a guy named Bryce. Bryce likes to play outside. <laughs> he likes to color outside the lines yes, in their relationship. <laughs> and it, he's gross. Mm-hmm. Not a good guy. And her mother is just adamant that this is the man. Okay, you played your games. You married a man. You've done all these things that we didn't agree with. You lost your husband. Now it's time to grow up, get into shape, and be with Bryce. And so she is feeling like she's done this intentionally. She's come with a date. Why are you here with a date? Bryce is here. How could you do this? This is so embarrassing. You're not wearing the dress. You know, all the all the things. She just stands her guard. I really was proud of her because... She lets it be known, you know, I'm here for the kids. Mm -hmm. I'm playing. I'm not going to have any of this. And I love that he just kind of stays with her the whole time. Yeah, what a scene to witness having just, I mean, really kind of encountering somebody for a second time and you just had a little bit of time with them. And Sean even gets kind of an introduction with Bryce as well. So it's Mm -hmm. actually... Her Jim, her grandma, yeah. who doesn't like to be called grandma, yeah. <laughs> Jim, which I will, t- we'll get into Andy and Jim in a minute, but mm-hmm. I want to back up a little bit since we're at the benefit. It's actually Jim who approaches Sean at the bar and says, I really like you. Uh, why don't you go rescue Andy from the person she's dancing with? Yes. It happens to be Bryce. So that leads Sean to go over and interrupt what's right. happening with Bryce. Obviously, when he walks up, Andy is not comfortable. She yeah, does Bryce not is not taking dancing. no for an answer. Yes. So I love that Sean stepped in and intervened with that moment and kind of took her out of that situation. Right. But in doing all of this, because he is who he is, <sighs> there's some press that have captured some images of the two of them together. And in the images, it obviously looks like there's more going on there than, right. than is happening. And this is what kickstarts yeah. the bulk of the story because all these rumors hit the headlines the next mm-hmm. day, and they both wake up to... Who is this person? Yes, Who this is Sean nightmare. dating? But we have to be clear is, the yes, these pictures have surfaced of them dancing, but what has really escalated it is Morgan, who, <laughs> like Bryce, can't take no for an answer, oh, yes. um, is now spreading these heinous lies that they were cheating the mm-hmm. whole time, basically trying to destroy his reputation her reputation of whatever she, you know, reputation she has. And she's being very nasty because 
she's commenting. Mm -hmm. Like, people are commenting on these, and she is playing the victim card. Oh, yeah. Oh, Amy, when I tell you, I just wanted to yank this woman's hair. (laughs) Is that all you wanted to do? (laughs) No, but that wouldn't be very nice, and I, I don't condone that kind of stuff. But, man, this chick, she just needed to... Calm down. Yeah, well, those aren't the words I would use. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you imagine? Because they both wake up, Andy and Sean, to this explosion of negative press. Yeah. But they don't have any way to reach out to one another. They're both wishing that they had a way to communicate with one another. They don't have the means to do that. And so you have Sean, on his perspective, concerned for Andy because he knows they've had t- conversations about the fact that she doesn't want to be in the spotlight. She's right. a songwriter, but she doesn't want the fame, mm-hmm. which is why she chooses to j- sell her songs to be sung by other people. And so he's concerned from that aspect. Mm-hmm. And she's Wondering what's happening because she knows it's all lies and she's thinking, okay, maybe he can handle this better because he's used to the fame. And so this just kind of explodes into this PR nightmare. And I love the fact that they all kind of came together. They were called together for this meeting Mm -hmm. of the PR team to try and handle it. (laughs) Right. And so let's talk a little bit about this scene where they do talk about how to navigate through this. I definitely, you you see that Sean has definitely surrounded himself with some people who are in it for themselves Mm -hmm. because we really get a glimpse of how his agent truly is. They just want to try to... Sweep it under the rug. Kind of, they, they kind of want to flip it mm-hmm. to, to the press to where to put a positive spin on something. Um, I love that in this meeting, they come out with, I love Andy's assistant, Nora, because she is just not taking she anything. She is Spitfire. Uh, I love yeah, her. I, she was one of my favorite characters. She's not having anything of what his agent is putting out. But I appreciated Sean and Andy having a moment to themselves to mm-hmm. how do we want to handle this? Are you okay? This is where you really start to see what kind of guy Sean is Mm -hmm. because you get a little bit of his thoughts, but when he actually is able to be vocal with her to check in, I've been wanting to reach out to you. Are you okay? I love that they kind of want to take some time to think about what they're wanting to do because they want to take advantage of this, not to, um, I don't know how to say it, like cover it up, but they're like, let's do something good. They want to put a positive spin on it. Yeah, let's do something good with this. Mm -hmm. And so it's in this meeting that they talk about doing an event together, some kind of fundraising event mm-hmm. or a positive event that they can kind of put that positive right. spin. And she wants to do the veteran uh, veterans families and he wants to do foster mm-hmm. families. When you hear hit the reaction of oh. his agent, oh, Amy, okay. I just thought, mm. dude, Read the room. <laughs> yes. You know, you're, you should probably be quiet right now because you just, you insulted him. Mm-hmm. And he is one of the few people who actually know that Sean grew up in foster care and then lived in a group home from the time he was a baby until he was 18. And the fact that he wants to do something for these families and the fact that his agent wants to not... <laughs> Mm-hmm. is not open to that because he thinks it's not going to look good or... I loved Andy's support of him in that moment mm-hmm. and really shut the agent down. I also love that he fired him <laughs> on yes. the spot, as yeah. he should have. But he also kind of gets wind of other things, some toxic things that are happening behind the scenes that he hadn't been no. made privy to. But I loved Andy's support of him in that moment. And then the fact later when he tells her, nobody has ever, other than my brothers, has stood up for me the way that you did in there. And then he hugs her. Oh, that whole scene. I loved it so much. Let's talk about Andy and Jim. I love oh, Jim so I do much. Too. She is so comical. She's, she's funny. She's so full of just this vibrant dynamic mm-hmm. that I, I love it. She she comes in like a tornado, but in a good way. I know. And I wasn't sure at first when she he- hears the crunching of the gravel and then Jim walks in. I thought, oh no, is this like, Same. you know, was mommy dearest, but grandma version. <laughs> When you really get to know her character and how much they love each other, and she's just this amazing person in Andy's life. I love that they do the words with friends, oh, that they yes, have that, that too. they make a bet. Yes. Oh, that was so sweet. And that I love that she's favorite. always in cahoots with Nora. I know. <laughs> They're always working together to kind of... Scheme against Andy or and Sean together. What was it at one point they said that they're like the golden girls? 
<laughs> but like of different generations or something like that. It was so fun. I love their dynamic. Sean and Andy start really spending a lot more time together as they're working and planning the logistics of the event. And of course, naturally, as this transpires, they're starting to spend more time together and playing words with friends yes, together. <laughs> they're really kind of growing this friendship, mm-hmm. to be honest. And I love that that's the direction that it takes and it doesn't really shift over into something. This is a slow burn. <laughs> this is one of the slowest burns, but I have but in to- in a good way. It, in the best way, because she is a widow. Mm-hmm. And her husband, now we haven't acknowledged this, but Andy, one of the biggest things that we have to point out, she has a six-month-old son yeah. when these allegations of her and Sean cheating together come out. And that's her first thought. And that is her first thought. Sean doesn't know for mm-hmm. a little bit that she even has a son. Yeah. And that's another thing that the agent freaks out about, thinking that they're going to think that it's his son. Mm-hmm. But it's not. She didn't even get to tell her deceased husband that she was pregnant mm-hmm. and he died. So she, you have to stop and think. You know, from the timing of pregnancy to her son being six months, this is just a little over a year. Mm -hmm. It's not a lot of time that has passed. And several people bring up their, you know, well, you could get with her, you could this, could that. Sean shuts it down. Which I really, really loved about him. He's very respectful of that. Yeah. And even as he learns more and more about her and kind of the journey that she's been on, Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that he's so thoughtful about her first and foremost. Yeah. And doesn't want to do anything that makes her uncomfortable and just always has her at the forefront of his mind. Exactly. That was one of the things that for me, he's a book boyfriend favorite. Oh, yes. Because it wasn't... And I also appreciate, too, that the author wrote it this way, because I do feel like sometimes I'm like, you're writing the story. You can manipulate time. I love that she allowed that character to still grieve. Mm -hmm. She was still in the grieving process. Yeah. And that he was respectful of that. Absolutely. And uh, it made it feel more authentic and genuine to me that this is, this could really happen. This relationship (laughs) could really play out. You talked about her six-month-old son, Uh Axe. So as they're working on the event, he... He doesn't really, hasn't been to her house. She's been very closed off about Axe. She doesn't talk about him. He doesn't know. Obviously, Sean doesn't know that she has a son. And he gets her address from Miranda Uh and goes to the house. And I was kind of bracing for impact. I wasn't really sure how things were going to happen and what she was going to, if she was going to be receptive to her and obviously receptive to him. Obviously, we hoped that. Yeah. And so when he shows up and she opens the door, looking a mess or whatever. <laughs> yeah. In her socks. And <laughs> her socks and her short shorts and her big t-shirt and, and he hair crazy. And he's thinking that she's there with someone romantically and kind of backpedaling. She realizes that's what's going through his mind and lets him in. And that's when he realizes that she has this son and he's freaking out a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and a part of that freak out is that he's having this moment of realization that This is why she's been so distant and protective of what's happening in the media is because it's not just her. She also has a son. And I love this scene because it really broadens my love for Sean because he immediately is protective of Axe too and doesn't know anything about him or has, you know, he doesn't have a relationship or Mm -hmm. anything with Axe yet. There's eventually, there's a scene where Sean and Axe and her are hanging out and the mom stops by and he's very protective also in that moment. We've talked a little bit about her mom coming or the relationship that she has with her mom. And so in this moment, Sean is holding Axe because Mm -hmm. Andy's given him to him. Find like a protective barrier, I guess, as her mom's like coming in and just tearing into her. And I love in that moment that Sean mouths to her, are you okay? Mm -hmm. And she has the thought later Wow, and everything that was happening, happening, he was I know. checking on me first. Like right in the middle of the whole lashing mm-hmm. just says that. There was so much. His, I think that that's one of the things that I love so much when we get these characters who it's this just deep sense of protectiveness mm-hmm. for another person. And, and not so much in an aggressive alpha male. Right. Type. Yes, exactly. That's, yes, we should definitely... <laughs> State that because that's what I'm talking about. Because I think that's where I get all ooey gooey for these characters. And when the authors give them to us, I just get very excited because I feel like sometimes when you have a protective 
male main character, they do come off as very alpha and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of alpha. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know. It's the, it's the approach. And Sean just is fiercely protective. Yes. He doesn't even really know why he feels so strongly that way, but he just does. Like he doesn't want anything bad to happen to her or to Axe. You are just gripped from the beginning. You're like, oh, these two need to I know. <laughs> work through the grief and all the things and be together. <laughs> We've mentioned that there are some rumors of some things happening mm. that he's hearing about from the agent that he fired. So now that he's hired a new agent to take his place, he's having him kind of check into rumors of him, of Sean being traded. Mm-hmm. And as he does his investigation, the new agent does rob. He does discover that indeed there are these pretty strong and, and realistic rumors of him being traded. And Mm -hmm. so Sean's really starting to have to consider what that will mean for him because he's got roots here. He's starting to grow this friendship with Andy. And so at this point in the story, it's just starting to escalate the talks of these rumors of trade. And we don't really know yet what's going to happen. Even at this point, I'm not really sure if he's going to be traded or not. Right. Not sure which direction the story's going to go. And on the flip side, you've got Andy over here who's been focusing a little bit on her music career. We know that she's a songwriter. She's been working with her friend Jonesy to work on this album. She's decided that she's going to kind of take things into her own hands. Which was kind of a result of these rumors because now people she's worked with for years, been songwriting for for years and selling music, they are wanting to use her so-called relationship with Sean How'd publicity. you feel about that? Oh, Amy, I was devastated for her. I just thought, man, people really are after the money. Mm-hmm. Because here is somebody who she was getting calls of question of whether or not people wanted to work with her yeah. because of the what scandal, the that, scandal might be that was following. Uh, and then she has people that she's worked with for years that mm-hmm. know her. Mm-hmm. They know her and they're using her or wanting to capitalize on this event that, you know, of whoever she's with, which is false. She's not even with the guy. And my heart broke for her because she's the single mom. She's been through so much. And now the one thing that she has that's hers, that she lives, she breathes, this is everything to her outside. And I'm talking about like outside of being a mother, but in her professional life. And now so much is just coming up and coming into question. And I just can't imagine what that would feel like. That would be devastating. I really, truly feel like, especially if you've been with people for years and you they want and to then use wondering, you in such yeah. a way. And then wondering, are they coming to me because of my talent? Are right. they coming to me because of the fame or the publicity that yeah. comes along with my name now? Yeah. So when she broke off with Jonesy, and she finally just, okay, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Let's do our own thing. She had a little that bit was of a fear. That yeah. was, it wasn't that she necessarily didn't want to do it. She just was scared because she has a son. Yeah. She has to provide for. She If she fails, what's going to catch her? You know, who's going to yeah. be there to catch her, so. I love that she has taken this kind of step of faith to do yes. her own album, and she's working with Jonesy to mm-hmm. do that. We have Sean and Andy, who's, like we mentioned, growing this friendship. They're mm-hmm. spending more time together. He's calling Axe's little buddy, and he's getting a bond with the German Shepherd dog. Oh. Snipe. Sniper. Yeah. Snipe. What's his name? Sniper. <laughs> yeah. Snipe. Sniper. Snipe for short. Snipe. And so he's, she's witnessing this, and... Feeling a little bit like, oh, he's not my dog anymore. He's kind of taking (laughs) over to Sean. Um, And so she is really questioning a little bit about kind of panicking a little bit on the inside of, oh, what's happening Mm -hmm. about my feelings with him? And he's also kind of weighing that. He's more on the side of I know how I feel about her and I'm just being patient. Patient. Yes, that's a great word. So it's in this moment where she's really conflicted about her feelings that she's watching one of his games and he gets hit. And he has a concussion and goes to the hospital. And this is where she really panics. Yes. She doesn't have a way to reach out because he, he, she's texted him. Obviously, yeah. he's in the hospital, can't receive that, but she didn't have any other connections. Mm-hmm. And she's really panicking what has happened to him and realizing the feelings that she has are a little bit more than like. And she finally does get to go to him in the hospital. And it's in this scene that her panic is really transparent to him as well. Mm-hmm. We get this from his perspective. So we are we already know that he's falling for her. He's yeah. getting these feelings. And she doesn't want to come close because she's scared. Mm-hmm. Let's talk just briefly about this scene. My heart was breaking for him and for her because he couldn't get out of the bed. And he says, come here. And she says, no, I just needed to know that you're okay. I can't do this. Okay. I didn't cry, but I teared up when he says, please, Andy, I can't get up. Oh, I know. 
Oh, okay. Now I'm going to cry in this moment <laughs> just thinking about it because he's begging her and she walks out the door. I'm assuming he closed his eyes because then the next thing he hears is her sniffling because she came. I love that but she came back. Amy, when the agony that he feels because he cannot move. Mm-hmm. He has a severe concussion and he can't move. Oh, but he begged her, begged her to come to him. And when she came back, I was oh. just like, oh, thank you. All the warm feelings. All the warm feelings because I was in agony with him. I was just, oh my gosh, Sean, what is it going to take? She's so scared. He's released from the hospital and is on the mend, of course. And we shift over to Jim's upcoming birthday dinner. And I knew that she had invited, We well, the reader knows that she's invited Sean. So you fully expect him right. to be at that. But it's not until much later that Andy discovers that Sean's been invited to this family dinner. And she's freaking out because she knows the dynamic because Jim has also told her that her parents are going to be there. And she's really stressed about how that all is going to play out. Well, let's talk about this birthday dinner. There's a lot of there's a lot to unpack with the dinner. You Mm -hmm. have them there first. And well, Sean hasn't arrived yet. And Jim, Mm -hmm. the doorbell rings and Jim tells her, oh, that's probably Sean. You better get it. And she opens the door and who's standing there but Bryce. Yeah. Who Who wasn't supposed to be invited. Invited. Right. And to the dinner. That is her mother, which, you know, she even asked Jim at one point, Bryce isn't going to be there because Bryce's parents were there. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, this is my turf. Your mother knows not to do that or something like that. And then the mom just comes up welcoming. (gasps) Oh. So it already sets the tone for I wanting to claw her mother's eyes out. (laughs) Yeah, the most uncomfortable (laughs) evening ever. Luckily, Sean shows up shortly after that. He's very protective and by her side and basically showing all kinds of support. Mm -hmm. But this dinner, while they're sitting here, is the big reveal. Let's talk about the scene and what transpires. Amy, this scene, I was so mortified for the family because there's two other, Bryce's parents and then another couple Mm -hmm. is at this dinner party as well. Bryce is just gross. And when the truth bombs start flying, (laughs) I'm, I was just thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, she just said that in front of his parents. And she has that thought at one point, like she looks at Bryce's parents and thinks, well, that's your son. (laughs) Yep. But the mom, her mom, Andy's mom, loses her mind, which Mm -hmm. I'm thinking for somebody who prides yourself on appearance and stuff, you're not doing a very good job of keeping your cool. Yeah. And she just basically said, we took you in. And Andy stops and says, what did you just say? She realizes. And she realizes she's been adopted. Yeah. But what she says to her when she said, now we can stop pretending that I'm something or something. That'll never all be the expectation. Yeah. That you didn't get what you bought. Yeah. And I just... When Sean helps her get up to get out of that house, to get Axe, I just can't even... And the look in her... She looks at Jim, and she's devastated for her. You know, because she's feeling such betrayal from Mm -hmm. her grandma, because her grandma never said anything. And they're like best friends. Right. And the dad is trying to get the mom to be quiet, and doesn't even look at her. The Mm -hmm. dad's... I don't understand. He's a pushover. Yeah, he just is so, (laughs) like, not even... Well, we haven't even talked about... Sean's upbringing and how he oh. was in the foster system. I mean, we talked briefly Mentioned about it, it, but so he doesn't know what it's like to have a loving family because he was um, he was surrendered into foster care as an infant, right? So he knows what it's like to you know be feeling like he's not enough, right? Not measuring up, and so he and Andy kind of had that in common, not on the same degree, but to an extent. Mm-hmm. And so now here you've got. Andy, who's feeling like her entire life has been a lie, she'll never measure up. She's already felt like she's never right. measured up to the expectations of her mother and mostly her mother. And then you have Sean on the other side who never had a family other than his foster brothers and feeling the abandonment of mm-hmm. his biological parents. So they're coming together and she really, this really sets her back. She goes into kind of this dark place. Right. I love that Sean, because she asks for time, he follows her out and she's like, I just need time. Time. And he respects that. He gave her two days. Which, good for him. Good because for that him. is two days longer than I would have. <laughs> Same. I love so much that he comes by and quote unquote rescues her. I know. Packs her up. He is the week off. He's forced to take a week off. He packs all the stuff up for her and Axe. He's like, 
he tells her, I have the week off. You guys are coming with me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even give her the option and just takes them. And slowly she comes out of this funk. Even the dog. He took the dog too. Oh, heart melt. Let's talk about this scene and how he kind of brings her out of this funk. The scene was so sad because he sees, you know, when he walks in the house is a mess, Mm -hmm. but her room is not. So that's one thing that he kind of acknowledges and she tries so hard to push him away. And that was one thing that was very difficult for me watching Andy, just that internal struggle of not wanting. She has such a wall up to protect her heart from being hurt the way she was when she lost her husband that she kind of pushes back. But I, I feel like it's real and that's how you, a person could feel. And he just plows through that and picks her up. And when she melts into him, Mm. It's just everything. I love that he doesn't allow her to push him away. Same. And I love that when she goes into his arms, even though she didn't want to be there at first, she feels that sense of feeling safe Mm -hmm. and protected. And they're just, their whole friendship is just, it's incredible. And the, the week that she has there with him, it's more than just friendship. He's giving her time to kind of process all these emotions and stuff. But he, it, I I felt tortured for him because he realizes he doesn't want life without her. Yeah. He doesn't want life without Axe. He wants them with him always. I love that ooey gooey side of him. Oh, me too. But it, she's, you know, he recognizes that she just had a major life altering change happen. And I, again, within yeah. a year. And so he tries to be patient with her. But And it's even in this moment, this week that they have together, that he's bringing her out of this funk, that he gets the call that he's been traded to Phoenix. Right. And he's thinking, what crap timing? Yeah. How am I going to do this? I'm falling for this girl. I can't. He And he registers that she's got this fear because of what she's lived mm-hmm. through uh, with her husband. And he's trying to be mindful of that and weighing, what do I do? What do I do? I can't ask her to be in a relationship with me where I can't promise her anything. We're going to have this long distance situation happening and so he and he only has 24 hours to right pack up which basically. it comes on the cusp of the night before they find or a few nights before they had their first kiss and yes. they're finally having these moments yeah like yeah Ooh. i forgot to mention the first kiss so they do finally you know show a little bit of, of romance to one another starting to give in to these feelings and that's when he gets the Um, the unfortunate news that he's been traded to Phoenix. Right. And they're in Tennessee, so it's not even a drivable distance. Right. So she's feeling discouraged. He's feeling discouraged. He makes the move to Phoenix. Obviously, he has to do that within 24 hours. And it's good old Jim that speaks some life into her and encourages her. I love Jim so much. Just encouraging her not to let fear keep her from a happily ever after. Because Jim lived through that too but she wasted she wasted so many years i love that they were able to repair too because he tells her when she during that week he said it wasn't jim's place to tell you oh yes and i love that i also love that when she messages jim and says i'm ready and jim comes in and she's in sweats (laughs) that was so funny oh my goodness she's in sweats right now because jim does not do sweats no that whole scene was a little bit of comic relief. Yes. And just, you know, made your heart feel better after everything that had transpired. But yes, it's in that that she convinces her, don't waste another moment. Start and, living. And Andy's a little bit thinking more logistically, how I'm going how am I gonna do that? And I love that Jim encourages her, she's you like, can just go. Go just move. Pack up and go. Right. And she's concerned about the album and she remi- Jim reminds her you can fly back if you need to make right. tweaks and, and there are opportunities that you can still go mm-hmm. to Phoenix. Friend, I was surprised that she literally packed up to move there. I was so happy. <laughs> oh, I was too, but I thought I was so happy. Wow, from one extreme to the next. I know, but she <laughs> She didn't it, even ask him. <laughs> it was kind of a click. Well, he said before he left, because she offers herself and he says, I don't want to do this this way. I not on our last night. Mm-hmm. And he said, and that is you have no idea how hard that is for me to make that decision in yeah. this moment. But I don't want that to happen right now because he said, I want you to know that this is going to last and we're going to make this work. He his whole the reason why he was so scared is he knew how hard it was for her with her husband being in the military. They did the long distance and it was difficult. I love that she shows up. I have to say when she is there, her surprise to him in Phoenix. I love the surprise. Was the best moment ever because Biggest one of the teammates face. said, I know I was so giddy, says, 
your girlfriend is talking to my wife and he looks over and there she is with Axe. <laughs> and I love that he walks up and they just have this moment. They're both emotional and they're just like, we're still not caring what anybody thinks. <laughs> they're like, yeah, it's just the best. But she still hasn't told him. So they go, they get she her She watches stuff, the whole game. Watches the whole game. Oh, I love that he tells her I love you when he walked oh, away. And she's like, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Me You're too. so funny. But when they leave and they go to pick up her stuff and go back, I love that she's apprehensive, but says, you know, I was thinking forever when he took her down the hall oh and my gosh. had a crib Oh in my that gosh, room, I knew you're, oh, I was ready to say it too. I was losing oh. my mind. I was just best losing my mind ever. ever. <laughs> it was ever. He was so ready. He was in it. They were committed. And it's, I mean, well, let's start looking at houses. And God, she's like, he you want to look at houses with space me? space for a snipe? I know. Because he was thinking, I mean, this it was, guy. I'm <laughs> telling you, it was just, I was trying to compare him to some of the others. And I'm like, they all have these same characteristics mm-hmm. of these things that we love. The story just felt so good. There was so much depth. And we can't even discuss all the things, you and know. There so and much. there's so much, especially with his past and the foster care and when he opens up to Andy about what he lived through, mm-hmm. his whole night lights. It's just... Yes, the fear that he had There's the a dark. lot. And they just, this couple, they really, I don't, I don't even know. Like, how do you put into words what they make you feel? It's, I don't know how. <laughs> it's like, it's so hard to talk about. We want to talk about the book, but we don't know. know how to put into words. I know. Just all gooey gooey. And then she plays at the flyover. Yes. Her parents are there. I was surprised to see her parents I know. standing I at was, the back. I was really glad that the author did not have Expound them. Expound on that? Yes. They, there was no, en- they didn't engage with one another. I was surprised, but I was, I thought that was interesting. I love that she got that opportunity. And in Me my too. mind, I feel like that was probably the author's Bluebird Cafe equivalent, oh, yeah. uh, which I thought was really uh, a cool thing for her uh-huh. because everybody in Nashville wants to play at the Bluebird Cafe. So I, right. in, in this story, it's the flyover, which is yeah. awesome. Let's close it out with their uh, engagement in the elevator and their HEA. Oh, this engagement. I was, I thought he's going to have this whole thing decked out. I love that it wasn't and that it was just simple. <laughs> I love that she's like, you know, well, you're an elite athlete. I think you can manage a few stairs. <laughs> but they just go in when he proposes to her. It was the best. And then when he has to get out, he's like, this isn't because of your answer. <laughs> just, you know, because he's, he's trying anxiety. not to have a panic attack. <laughs> but the fact that he made it come full circle mm-hmm. and the moment where they met to the moment of let's spend the rest of our lives together. Ugh, a so good, so good. So from the good. left to the right, and mm-hmm. just the family that they create together. Uh, somebody who finds out they were adopted, somebody who grew up in foster care, to have a son, to be pregnant with their daughter in the end. It was the most beautiful story. All I just, the warm, fuzzy feels. I mean, yeah, but I have this without being, on my face right now, just the whole conversation. But not like a warm, fuzzy, and not fluff. Yes. You know what I mean? There was so much depth and heart. And Stacey Williams just knocked this out of the park. It was, it was (laughs) wrong reference, wrong sport, but (laughs) (laughs) keep going back there. It was so good. It was so good. We loved it. That wraps up our discussion of where you belong. Thank you for joining us on this episode. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and want to continue the discussion with us. We would love to hear from you. What were your favorite parts of the story? Hit us up on Instagram at Postbook Depression Podcasts or on Facebook in our Postbook Depression Discussion Group. You can also email us at postbookdepressionpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, keep reading.